this is this is going to be fun tonight. This will be reminiscing for a lot of folks. It'll be new information. There'll be great stories, and I think that's what the, that's what the program is all about. And that's what we're looking forward to tonight is hearing a lot of stories. So uh, I'd like to welcome our guest, Phil and Kim Nuxall. Thank you. Thank you. Now the idea tonight is getting a, a perspective growing up in Uxall. And we, we've heard the story very often probably inflated. Uh, I'm sure it gets bigger all the time. At one point, I, you know, the story is of your father, Joe Nuxall. At 14 years old, he was snatched out of Hamilton's West Side Little League, rushed down <laughs> to the ballpark because they desperately needed a pitcher, and he was the man for the I guess the this will. <laughs> so to, to start out, give us the, give us the true story of, of your father. Well, uh, you know, Dad was uh, blessed with uh, great athletic talent. You know, he was known for uh, being a prolific basketball player, football, and, and certainly baseball. And at this time, uh, the war was going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And scouts were out looking for ball players, and they actually heard about his dad, our grandfather, uh, Orville, who they called the Ox. And that time there, was, there were these uh, Sunday leagues uh, just not too far from here, what they call the North End Fields. Um, and that's where Dad and the, and the kids were growing up. And Dad and his father played in this, this Muni League, they called it. And the scouts had heard about Grandpa, and they came to actually uh, take a look at Grandpa. And the while ox. the ox, the and hiney. while I call him hiney. <laughs> yeah, Grandma called him Heine, and I always really? thought that was so funny. But it's a German. Did not it know is that. a term of endearment. You've never heard him heard her call him Did hiney. not know that. Heine. <laughs> We're all learning right. something. We are. <laughs> So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Where was I? I had color. <laughs> so, uh, they, the story goes they, they were going to look f at, at Ox slash Heine, and uh, <laughs> they, uh, they came upon Dad. Like, you know, and one of the scouts, Dad tells a story that you know, they said, Who's that? And they said, That's Ox's son, Joe. And uh, they became very interested, and uh, try to shorten the story up a little bit. Uh, you know, he was, a, I believe, a freshman at Wilson, Wilson High School, and they offered him a, a contract. Now, what a lot of people don't know, he was age 15 when he signed, uh, but uh, kind of the other part of that story is they actually wanted to sign him at age 14, and, and they wanted to sign his dad as well. I always thought it would have been kind of cool if uh, you know, both of them would have ended up in Ogden, I think it was Ogden, Utah, Mom's in the audience. Is that true? She can verify some of this, I hope. Give an eye to the head, Mom. That's all right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I thought that would have been something if they both had signed. But, Father and son, uh, but, same time. Right, right. being yeah. early teen. Right. But they didn't want him signing at age 14. I guess the Reds came back and made him uh, an outstanding offer, probably, I think it was $500 or something like that. Big bonus, baby, back then. For so, the season? For the season, wow. I, probably, I think so. Maybe it was 500 of, I don't know, a couple <laughs> months or something. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so he signed at age 15 and got to uh, you know, go down to uh, Crosley Field uh, during a game. It was against the Cardinals, and the Reds were uh, losing pretty soundly to the Cardinals, and Dad had no no idea or thought of being, you know, placed in the game. And lo and behold, I guess Coach McKechnie yelled out Joe, and Dad still didn't think it was him. And, <laughs> you know, and then the next thing you know, he's, yeah, <laughs> next thing you know, he's pitch, you know, he's pitching in the major leagues, pitched two thirds of an inning. Things were going well, I guess, for two outs. And I remember him always talking about what if he had gotten that third out. Uh, what what would have you know his path been then? But everything fell apart, I guess, after two thirds of an inning. And I don't know how many a bunch of runs and walks. So they Ouch. they put him back uh, to the minor leagues uh, shortly thereafter. And I think the neat part of Dad's story is the fact that he spent I think it was eight years in the uh, minor leagues. And you know, to me, that's that's a real story of uh, perseverance, you know, sticking, sticking with it. Not everybody Not, will stick no, it out for eight no. years. Of course, he was 15, so 
he had some had some room there to, to play with. Now, where was he playing in the minor leagues? Gosh, he was. Uh, was he in Florida? All over. No, I think. I was like, it's 15 in Florida. Yeah, I stick. I know he played in Charleston. Down. Phil Phil was born in Tulsa, Tulsa. Oh, okay. uh, Oklahoma. Um, I was I born think. in a dugout. That's what I <laughs> 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 Tulsa, Oklahoma. So now, Phil, you're the older brother. Yes. By how many years? Three. Three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were born. You were born on the road. Is born on the road. Well, yeah, I haven't been back since. <laughs> really, we haven't. So the um, so jumping ahead. Okay. Again, the idea of tonight is to get to <clears throat> your perspective as brothers growing up in Nuxall. Um, earliest recollection of. I mean, obviously, at an early age, you don't know this is different than anybody else's life. What's your earliest recollection of, okay, something's a little different, huh? <laughs> Easy. Hamilton night. Hamilton night when they had this huge caravan of buses that went from uh, Hamilton all the way down Hamilton Avenue to Crosley <clears throat> Field. And we were in the front car, which now would have been a big limo, but back then it was a brand new station wagon. Uh, yeah, I just... I couldn't figure that out. I knew something was different, you know, that There's a lot of all people. this fuss was about dad. I'm like, this is bizarre. <laughs> and we actually, Kim was able to run some pictures. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. there you go. And we have uh, pictures we can, everybody can take a look at afterwards. But uh, this was, this, Kim said, this is Hamilton night. Mm -hmm. You know what year this is? I don't, I don't. Um, but you're talking I'm about guessing the buses. In the 50s, late 50s, yeah. Mm -hmm. Buses lined I guess up literally, thousands uh we have some actual live fit footage of it and i think there's like 40 or 50 buses lined up they lined up along neil 48 48, 48. Yeah. 48 oh, buses <laughs> you can imagine that. you can see i assume this is on high street and there's the line of buses they have hamilton night and was that something that specifically came out of um joe nuxall or was i mean did they have a different night for different communities you know that's a good question uh i i don't know but it's a big um, tradition. I mean, right, going on. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like consistently Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Big tradition mm -hmm. that has carried on for decades. Yeah, even this past year. In yeah, the last few years, they've been, uh, I think, maybe missed a few years, but uh, uh, they brought it back, so it's still still, still going. It's kind of a neat, a neat thing. So your first recollection is something, there's more attention here than, I, than most kids are getting. And yeah, because, I mean, after we got down to the ballpark, and they had this big, you know, uh, presentation. He got the key to the city, uh, an oven, and there was this little, <laughs> little toy oven, you know, to represent the real thing. Yeah, but easy I would, bake oven. I would make uh, scrambled eggs in the sandbox on that little <laughs> oven. Uh, but yeah, the ceremony just really blew me out of the water because I was five years old, four or five. Um, you know, and all the lights and the people cheering, and it was wild. You know, I mean, for a five-year-old, that's a lot to take in. That's very cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, it was scary. I mean, I was really kind of scared didn't know, of the you whole You didn't thing. know what it was all about. Yeah, been, yeah. I'm like, well, this is just Dad. Mm -hmm. What did he do? <laughs> <laughs> and what's what your first thought or rec recollection of your life might be a little bit different, or at least your family's life might be a little different. Right. I, I think, uh, you know, just going to the ballpark with Dad, uh, and when I think back to going when I was young, and especially watching him pitch, uh, think back, it's kind of interesting to think about now. Uh, one thing that stands out in my mind is uh, you're, you're sitting in the stands and he's pitching to hear people yell, you know, your dad's name at a at a young age was I remember thinking that positive that's kind of positive and negative. Positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. I don't know how people acted then in the stands, but sometimes uh, in oh, yeah. professional games now they really don't think about somebody's relative maybe next to you right. on the field. Right. And your grandpa right. Ox Heine was one of the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, he's yelling at your son. Oh, you stink. Yeah. <laughs> So the, what about the reaction? You go to the ball games, and uh, did folks know that you were Nuxalls, you were Joe's sons? Did they uh, make a fuss over you? Or did you, you hear things where people were yelling, get him out of there, get him out of there, and you kind of hurt your feelings? Or what? 
what happened in the stands? It's hard to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just kind of learn to kind of turn the other way and try to ignore it, but it's hard to do. Huh. I think so, it was a good lesson for us in dealing with uh, with negativism. Uh, I think you know. I think mom was a good role model in that way. You know, I don't remember her ever getting upset over that. So, you know, we followed that as well. That's kind of the way it was. This is the business he's in. And, you know, you're going to have to deal with it. So, so we did. She yeah. set the tone of how you were to react yeah. to other people. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you had to bite your lip once in a while? Or? Right. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Like, I don't think we ever reacted or responded mm -hmm. to no. negative no. comments. No. Yeah. Which was hard not to. <laughs> but on the other hand, it was a lot of fun going to ballpark, see your dad pitch. Um, I mean, did you were you at every game? At what age did you, you say did you did you become a fan of your dad? Did you become a fan of the, the Reds or did you become a fan of baseball? How did that kind of evolve? I was a fan. My family was probably sitting here going, "Oh yeah, right." Cause <laughs> I was, uh, I, it really was fun. Um, it seemed like we went to every game. I'm sure we didn't. No, I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't remember going to every game. Uh, Up until like, eh, I'd say junior high school, mm -hmm. when I think I, I didn't go very often. But when we were kids, we would go. We'd eat dinner at, was it 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the mm -hmm. afternoon because he had to be down for batting practice. We would get to the park, dad would dress up, and then I think you would go on the field and toss the ball with Shag, some of the Shag players, and on. I would go underneath the stands and Where wait did you for go? Wilma, the hot dog lady, <laughs> the hot dog stand. I was wondering what happened to you. I was out shagging balls and no, it was somewhere. It's all about food for me. It was. It was. <laughs> Which brings up an interesting point that uh, this you have obviously two different uh, two different interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, spring training. Something that you had related to me is the. When, when you first saw this, this difference kind of kick in, you had a great childhood, or well, you mm -hmm. both did, getting to go to spring training every year. You're missing school. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll t I tell people that now. I remember you used to tell my students in school, and they're like, they just couldn't believe it. And it, it's kind of embarrassing now, but you know, we were taken out of school from first grade to senior in high school for six weeks every, <laughs> every year. And we did our work, of course, but, I, but uh, yeah, uh, for me, I mean, spring training, uh, just uh, uh, the memories of that for me. You know, I gravitated toward baseball. I loved playing ball. Uh, so for me to be in spring training and hang out in the locker room and, you know, shag flies with uh, Wally Post and Frank Robinson and, and Pete Rose, you know, even now I look back and think that was, that was a pretty, pretty cool experience. But... Uh, and we, we lived on the beach. Phil will probably take it from there. That was his. Uh, it's about the beach the, for me. It's about the beach for <laughs> Phil. Yeah. So you weren't yeah. hanging. Spring training for you wasn't about baseball. Not that much. No. 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 It was a great education. Actually, I loved the beach and uh, you know, sea life so much, I was actually considered being an oceanographer. I was huh. going to go out to La Jolla, California, be an oceanographer, but it's got sidelined and ended up being a speech pathologist. But I, I love the beach, still do. Now, that became your career. Um, as you mentioned, you, you became a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, for one thing that you mentioned to me is one thing in spring training, you would actually, your thing was at that time music. Mm -hmm. And you, yeah, would, yeah. you would go off and do other things during spring training. Your, where you, I think you, you mentioned that uh, you were studying, or was it piano, or you at least you would try it out for? Oh, well, I was in Corlears, Fairfield Corlears. Yeah. Theater. Uh, in fact, Jim and Pat Davis are in the audience, my best friends for life. Uh, Paul and Mary and Tom's, yeah, they were my big influences at a time where I was desperate for some self identity because, you know, it was all about sports. I'm like, why? Well, that's just not my thing. Yeah. And then when I got involved in theater and music, Wow, that it, it changed changed everything for me. See, I, I get that because I have, with four kids, I have three that are athletes, and one whoop, went off that theater and music direction, which is great. I mean, is, we have a great yeah. time with that. I enjoy that thoroughly. 
and she's doing her own thing, which I appreciate because everybody should. Everybody should do their own thing, and the fact that you know she doesn't feel like she has to follow suit. So you're in a family, uh, you know, of athletes. Grandpa Ox Heine <laughs> is an athlete. Dad's an athlete. You were aspiring athlete, but right. you you found you found something different. I tried. Uh, let's see, basketball, baseball, track. I was good in track, uh, and I you know, nothing called to me. You know, I tried them all for three days. Basketball, <laughs> baseball, and track. That, that was the sports career, three days. I was a good wrestler. Tell that uh, what he hasn't tennis. told you, his, his gift really was, and I always said this, he was as gifted musically as dad was uh, athletically, was uh, keyboard piano. Yeah. Uh, I remember, and I, I can remember it to this day, mom actually wanted to start taking uh, uh, organ lessons, so they got an organ organs delivered and uh, he just sits down and starts playing it. I mean, just like that. Just, well, yeah, no, it was, never it took was like a two year process. Because I think mom, dad, did he take lessons too? Mom took lessons and I would be at the top of the stairs by the bedrooms listening to what she was learning unbeknownst to her and then <laughs> later on in the evening I would go down turn the organ on as soft as possible so nobody could hear me and I would play what she had just been taught. So you were playing so play by, by ear? Yeah. Wow. Oh, totally. Couldn't read music. It's, it's imagine, like, yeah. I can't even explain it. Huh. And then after, I think it was after a year, well they, they, decide, they decided I needed to take lessons so I took lessons and then after a year, it was Bob No, I think was my organ teacher. One day he discovered... Yes, yes it was No. Yes, yes it was No. Yes, no. Yes, no. Uh, yes, in the middle good. of the lesson, he he noticed I was adding and augmenting all these chords, and he's he said, "Where, where did you learn this?" And then he caught on, and then he said, "I can't teach him anymore. Come on in." Yeah, uh, yeah it's right. it's, it's a gift that huh. I have been fortunate to to be given, and I love it. Yeah. And you and you tried out to uh, play at the ballpark. I didn't try out. Uh, I, I oh, thought, thought about it. No, Ronnie Dale, Ronnie Dale yeah. who was my idol. Uh, after I get my hot dog from Wilma, the hot dog, lady, <laughs> I, I'd run to the uh, behind home plate where our seats were, and I would wait for Ronnie Dale, the organist, to arrive. And I watched every note he played, and I memorized his whole routine. Really? And at home, I'll probably remember. I would end my routine. You know, I did the seventh inning stretch. And I ended with good night, ladies. <laughs> yeah, they, they got to listen to that. Already. Yeah, was the, the ballpark at home yeah. again. It all over again. Yeah. yeah. He'd every, play the national anthem. We'd have to stand up before we ate, before we ate dinner every before night. Did, yeah, right. Hand over the heart. Yeah. So spring training, you both are kind of kind of on your own, or. Mm -hmm. Or mom is is there? Or you're at the ballpark. You're hanging out in the dugout. You're you're running around. Well, we had we had school. We were tutored. We had a tutor uh, almost every year except for one, uh, where mom and dad enrolled me in uh, the local school. <laughs> and at that time, their school systems were kind of behind. You know, the school systems up here. So I remember teaching. I think it was second grade teaching my class how to read. So they I think, <laughs> determined that you know wasn't working out too well, so we went back to the tutors. But Dad loved to tell the story about how, you know, we paid all this money to have a tutor come to the house, and I'd come home from, from practice, and they'd be playing with puppets <laughs> or out on the beach collecting seashells. <laughs> Where, you know, where's the school? What is the Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But we did. Some school work, so the rest of the time, again, you're you're having fun at the ballpark. Yeah, for me, I mean, it was it was for me just a thrill to uh, you know. Again, looking back, growing up, I loved every minute of it. One of the neat things, and people ask me, did your dad push you into into baseball? You know, and not at all. I mean, I had an innate love to play, and I, I loved going to the ballpark every day. Even when he would come home from spring training, I remember. There was a little sidewalk in back where the beach was, and the, I can picture the sun setting right now. Uh, he and I throwing throwing more, you know, on the on the back uh, on the back sidewalk there. So yeah, just, just so many good memories, and just 
experiences uh, you know I got from a baseball perspective are just uh, uh, yeah, it's you, really kind of hard played, to believe. You played some minor league ball. Yeah, I played. Uh, 72, 73, 74, right? Very good, yes. Yeah. An illustrious career. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, two of, the, two of the years were, first two years were in the Reds organization, then one in the Seattle organization. Yes, right? yes, yeah. So were you pitching? How, was, how, did, uh, how did that come about? You're, you're, okay, you're Joe Knoxall's son. You're going mm -hmm. through high school, you're playing baseball. Yeah. Uh, everybody, high expectations. Was that yeah. a lot of pressure? You know, it, it, it was. Um, you know, looking back, because I remember just even Little League and Babe Ruth, uh, you, know, you think of comments people made. Of course, there was an obvious comparison, and I, and I certainly understand that now. But, uh, you know, I wasn't going to be at Dad's level, you know, of athletic ability. But uh, I think it also it taught me to work harder because I didn't want people to think things were given to me. So, you know, I felt that's the one thing I learned from that is, is work ethic. And uh, that's what allowed me to, I think, finish my career in baseball. As much as I wanted to play, I loved playing. Uh, when I was done, I was able to move on, where I think some people, you know, they're kind of stuck in that. I wish I would have done this. Uh, you know, all I did, I had no regrets. So uh, I was able to move on from that and then go into the teaching career. But I loved, I loved every minute of minor league ball, uh, just the, you know, the people you meet from from all over the country and uh, just the experience of playing playing ball every day it was it was great we lived on uh, on treasure island and we played down in st pete and the only time we wore shoes were it was uh, you know when we were on the ballpark yeah I mean, it was great hanging on the beach yeah that's right literally yeah so uh you know so, so many great memories just feel very very fortunate you know to have had that had that opportunity, so. Uh, and all the, the only shoes you wore yeah. were flip flops. Yeah. <laughs> flip -flops. <laughs> Sandals, and flip flops. Um, I think we were very fortunate in that Dad did not push baseball or anything else on us. You know, he kind of let us find our own niche, so to speak. I'm extremely grateful for that because had he forced me into sports, I I would have taken a whole different direction. It really made a difference. I think the message from, uh, I mean, from both of our parents, if whatever you're doing, do it, do it well. You know, Dad, work hard, and you, know, you have no regrets. You, you, you know, you're not one of those who constantly looking back in your life. I, I wish I would have done this, and neither one of us, you know, have that have that feeling at all. And I think, you know, again, <coughs> we have, of course, our image. <coughs> excuse me, of Hamilton Joe. We call him Hamilton Joe, hometown guy, but <coughs> he was very much a family man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about the, they didn't uh, push you to do things you didn't want to do. So there's some great <laughs> pictures that we'll show. And obviously, we have pictures over here for people to share with later. Uh, age is here for Phil and Kim with uh, Joe Nuxall. I'm going to go with somewhere around eight or nine, wouldn't you say? You're probably. I am Phil is huge. Than that. You are uh, a big boy. Oh, God, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Husky, husky. You're husky. You're big. Husky. You're a big bone. Big, big bone. bone. Yeah. Well, I, it's even interesting in this position. You can see the proximity. Uh, is it, this is you, Kim, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hanging close to the baseball, eyeing the baseball. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. impressed Phil was even looking that way. That's yeah. a baseball, yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is beautiful here. This is this is a, a Nuxall family portrait. We like. Yeah. yeah. Mom had to uh, do everything she could to get me to dress up to have the family picture. So I love playing outside in the woods, man. Anything I had to dress up, it was tough. So I know what Nothing's she went changed. through. Sorry about that, Mom. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mom. Ah, what she went through to get me in this tonight. Good. <laughs> and you got to wear bow ties. That's impressive. That was one of four photos. All four families uh, went to Endicott Studios, I think and had our portraits done and then we had them all in one like collage for grandma and grandpa for Christmas that year. When you say four families, you're referring to? Three aunt and uncles. Okay. Yeah. What is, uh, and they were, were they at all in, in sports? I mean, were, I mean, were they mm -hmm. in this area? That's something I don't know about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Uncle Bob played uh, in the red system. He was, he, he was in the service. I know one of his, Kind of claim to fame since he played with Willie Mays in the service. 
Uh, Bob hurt his arm. Uncle Don, who Dad said uh, he felt was the best athlete in the family, played some minor league baseball. He was a prolific basketball player. Uncle Gene uh, was a good football player and played uh, baseball. Maybe it was football Uncle at Gene? High, University. Ohio University? High University. Ohio University. Yeah, there you go. Or, you and Ohio, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a Bobcat. Bobcat. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> We have a Miami. Uh, Where are we thing. tonight? Miami <laughs> University. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, Thank but, you. I, but I sent one of my kids. Sent one of my kids to Miami, so I'm, you know, one. <laughs> so in this again, and, uh, <clears throat> it's expanded as I'm finding out more more athletes. Were you? <laughs> you were the the one that, as my kids told my one daughter, you know, you're adopted. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I still believe that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the lucky one. Yeah. I, I, no regrets at all. And again, but you were encouraged to do what you wanted to do. Exactly. It's not all yeah. about baseball. I remember mom trying to get me to take, was it tap dance lessons? Yeah, yeah. And I, I had no part of that, but I was looking <laughs> back on it, I'm like, that was really cool, you know? Did they let you mother, to yeah, expand? Too. We know he has, this isn't his thing. Because I was always dancing and wiggling, and I mean, I had ADT before they even knew what was going on. Yeah, you did, Phil. Yeah, yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, again going kind of going back to the time you, times you get to hang out in the ballpark, um, going to the locker room during day games or during uh, spring training, um, mm -hmm. mischief, fun, you know. The smell. The smell. The smell. Yeah. I can still Remember the smell. The locker room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. pretty. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you probably have a whole different. <laughs> no, no, that's that's true. I remember that smell of the old. It's the old Crosley Field. It was all that old wooden wooden floor, you know. Uh, they had the spittoon, a little sand sp 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 spittoon off to the side with the players. You know, that was a big chewing tobacco era then. Yeah. So uh, I remember thinking that's kind of gross, and I'm glad I still do and did. So we had good lessons in why not to smoke. <laughs> we never did. Well, it's like you said, with the wooden floors, I mean. There's nothing. Nothing comes clean. Everything that's either yeah, dropped or in that room becomes part. Yeah, becomes part right. of the essence. Right, of right, the right, right, yeah, right. right. So at ballparks, mm -hmm. you get to run around with the players. Uh, did they good seats? You know, good seats. Was, yeah. Did, um, they get, did they kind of uh, take a shine to you, or were they? Uh, did they give you a hard time as far as like, oh, okay, we're gonna play a trick on the knuckle boys? Or <laughs> No, uh, you know, I look back on that, I, and I think one of the, uh, the results of being the son of, of, you know, a major league player, I personally was, I became like a very shy person, so I didn't say a whole lot. And when I think back, the players who were drawn to me were also the quiet player. I remember Don Gullett was very quiet, and for some reason, I think that reason, maybe he saw that in me. But he kind of kind of befriended me. And Alex Johnson was a great hitting left fielder. Alex didn't say anything to anybody, but he always made it a point to take me out. And he loved for me to throw to him. And I would be out in the outfield, you know, and I thought I could strike him out, you know. And I remember just standing. He would say, "Get closer." So I'd stand 20 feet from Alex Johnson, throwing as hard as I could. He would just whack, and I'm like, "Wow." You know? But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think. Um, that uh, that was one of the things that stands out in my mind is, is those those type of players, kind of the quiet players, sure. uh, came came in. So you oh, were no. a musician, a theater, but <laughs> your path didn't go the way of being a professional musician, or no. Uh, actually, I was <clears throat> when I first went to OU, I had my mind set on theater, and I took some theater courses, and a, a lot of the theater folks from OU or from uh, New York, New York City, <coughs> Cleveland, and the competition, I, right off the bat I knew I was, I was up against a lot. So I kind of faded out of that and then went into speech and hearing sciences. So how did that transition from? I, you know, I don't know, it just kind of happened. It just, uh, I actually was volunteering before I went to college for the local uh, was board of MRDD at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my cousin Sean, I was involved in a day camp in the summers, and I was a volunteer with my cousin Debbie. And I remember we would get the bus at the old, next to the monkeys, mon 
be mutual or something building, uh, community chess building uh, across from the library in Hamilton. And there was a, a male speech therapist who would do individual speech therapy uh, in that same building. And I remember watching him and thought, that's really kind of cool. Hmm. Uh, and I wish I could remember his name, but he, that inspired me uh, to think, hey, that, that might be a good career for me. Which may not be such a stretch if, you know, music, tonality, voice. Communication. It, was, it really already, was all about communication. Something was already, you're already interested in. Right. And I, I, I'm such a big believer in communication. Okay. You know, opening up your mouth and communicating, which so many people just don't know how to do or they're afraid to do it. Needless to say, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I communicate too much sometimes. But, yeah, I've always been fascinated with communication. Communication in general. And where, where did you, where did the speech pathology take you? Did you have to practice here? Uh, well, I got my uh, bachelor's of uh, speech and hearing sciences at OU, and I did my internship at the Walter Reed Army Hospital in Stuttering, and also at the National Easter Seal Treatment Center in Rockville, Maryland. Wow. And then I was all set to go to Ball State University to get my master's, and Margaret Rost, uh, who was the superintendent of uh, the Hamilton County Board of MRDD, called me one day. It was like right before I was getting ready to go to Ball State, and she offered me a job. Uh, it was downtown at the old uh, school on Lynn Street. And I said, sure. And I stayed with, with them for 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And we'll talk about your second career coming up. Yeah. Transitioning now, uh, coming out of high school, as we mm -hmm. talked about, uh, mm -hmm. you were able to get into the minors for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, had a two and a half year career, and uh, one of the things, too, our parents instilled in us is have plan B in place. And for me, it was college, for Phil it was, too. So uh, at the time I was playing, Miami was on... Um, Quarters, so I was actually able to, to go to school one quarter during the off season, which was a good thing for me. So um, finished playing baseball, and you know I I wanted to go in arts and sciences, and found I didn't have some of the background that I needed for that. And uh, I, I love you know I loved working with kids. I think I probably got that from dad. He loved helping kids, and I uh, thought you know athletics and kids uh, teaching and became an elementary phys ed teacher and uh, taught at uh, Fairfield Central for 32 years and uh, it was a great, you know, great, great career. And during that time is uh, when we actually kind of got into the, the character fund and we, we started that then. But um, yeah, it was um, a great, I mean, a great transition for me. It was really smooth to go from baseball to that. And I got into a little coaching as well, uh, which I loved. Um, I. Still, still miss the coaching piece, but I got involved also and in, opened up a business. We had a, a baseball pitching machine uh, batting range we had, yeah. so uh, I got involved in doing that in the summer, so I kind of ended up getting away from coaching a little bit, but uh, all went well, all worked out well. Very good. Now, the second career has happened. After, you say you spent 30 years, you 32 years in your career, you found something different after that. I did, I was living in Clifton, at the time, and wanted all well. Can't, I don't care. You've never been a yo-yo dieter like Dad and I were, but the weight's always going up and down. Um, I wanted to lose some weight, so I joined the weight program. And the only exercise I really truly enjoy is walking, so I started walking at Spring Grove Cemetery in Arboretum, which I'd never been to before. I just heard it was a beautiful place. And well, that's a cemetery. You know, let me let me go down there and see what it's like. So I started walking, and I got interested in all the uh, names, the the artwork, architecture, and then I ended up short. Long story short, volunteering for a sculpture inventory project, mm -hmm. and the goal was to find 100 of the most significant pieces of artwork in the cemetery. And at the end of that project, we found over 600. So the bells and whistles kind of went off in everybody's minds. Nobody realized how much Nobody knows what's really was here. really there. Yeah. So when that project was over with, I decided to look into you know who's keeping track of the history. 
who's keeping track of all this wonderful artwork and architecture, and I learned that nobody was. So I decided to do something about that. So I went home, I wrote a 10 page proposal called Why Spring Grove Needs an Historian, uh, set up a meeting with the board of directors, and the Heritage Foundation pretty much contracted me on the spot uh, after that proposal. And that, that's developed into, uh, I have a docent program now with over 26 volunteer uh, tour guides or docents. Mm -hmm. And we've um, uh, got the tour program, as well as my role as historian. And then the book last year, so it's been we have quite an amazing second career that I never, never dreamed I'd be doing. It. And this is <coughs> Beauty in the Grove, Spring Grove Cemetery and Arboretum. And for those that uh, may not be familiar, this is down near the river, or uh, down Cincinnati. Uh, no, it's not near the river. Well, it's near the old uh, Mill Creek. <laughs> that, well, okay. Uh, that's, yeah. The, and it's one of the, what's the second? Second largest, largest cemetery, cemetery in the United States. The United States. Yeah. And we're familiar with, I think it is up in Dayton, there's Woodland. 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 Yeah. Again, Arboretum, as well as uh, History number of famous people that uh, have been uh, laid to rest here. Wade Hoyt's in Spring Grove. Miller Huggins is in Spring Grove. He used to be uh, Babe Ruth's manager. Took Very good. <laughs> yeah, well, That's a baseball thing. He's got a horse there for you. <laughs> Oscar Robertson's mother. Okay. Mizell. Wow. Did not know that. Uh, uh, Lenore Wingard, who was an Olympic swimmer. Hmm. Yeah. So the Arboretum history as well as, oh, this is just beautiful. Yeah, uh, the book sold out within a year, which was <coughs> beyond my wildest expectation. Fantastic. So it's in its second uh, printing. Uh, I'm proud to say all the proceeds go to the uh, One Way Farms Joe Nuxall Children's Center project. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Wow. And, and so, it keeps me busy. Yeah. <laughs> so again, the continuing uh, history <coughs> Still, st still continues because you're still delving into that. You're running the tour program with the docents and so forth. So that's your, that's your second career, and you're continuing on with that. Yeah. Yeah. And your second career, <laughs> um, well, let's see, uh, this, this golf thing, which you love dearly, right? <laughs> <laughs> golf also not your thing. I tried it. I tried it. <laughs> but uh, the golf, as well as uh, carrying on your father's uh, character education fund. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the golf was kind of a kind of a summer job. Yeah. Uh, we we have the golf uh, driving range in Joyce Park, and I love working outside. It's been a great great thing for me. I I love being creative and and taking care of turf. So that that's been a it been a fun thing for me. I love, yeah, I, love, I, I just I, I love doing like that. But yeah, my real passion became uh, character education. Uh, really, in about my 22nd year teaching, I had seen a, um, a segment on character uh, development from Tom Lacone. He's one of the, the, the big gurus of character. And it kind of lit, lit a fire, a passionate fire for me. And I think it caused me to really reflect on my life and think um, of all of that I've learned, both positive and negative. You know, I had the the old school football coaches who, you know, who, you know, beat it out of you to, to be better. And then I had right. the positive uh, coaches that. That was another reason I didn't go into sports. <laughs> <laughs> you had one of those. <clears throat> one of those coaches. Yeah, yeah. Far too many. Yeah. yeah. And then I had the positive coach, and uh, you know, I I always felt that's that's the way to go. Is how how do I inspire players? Rather, you know, you can try to overpower them or empower them. So. Um, and I just began kind of researching character development and, and integrating it into my class. And I just found that when, when you truly connect with kids and, and respect them, you'll, you'll get that back. And it's not easy to do. It, it takes time. It takes patience. But, you know, the results for me in the classroom were, when I look back at my career, it's just night and day on my last 10 years and how my, how my kids were and the culture there. So that lit the character kind of uh, fire inside of me. And I, and I kept thinking if, if it works in this, in my setting, it's really what's needed in society, you know? And I, I, 
I'm convinced to this day and always will be if, if we can find a way to, <clears throat> to get kids to be more respectful and caring and more empathy and, and, and determined and so on, uh, you know, it, it can so have an impact the, so on society. Some of the terms that are on here, <clears throat> diligence, sure. kindness, excellence, mm -hmm. attentiveness, love, neatness, obedience, sure. fortitude, honesty. Mm -hmm. I remember when Kim first started talking about, you know, the starting this, the foundations and everything. Honestly, I was concerned. I thought he was losing his mind. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the honest about truth. I thought, there's no way that he's going to be able to do all of that. Well, he's done it plus. I mean, it's uh, and this miraculous is the, what he's done. And this is <clears throat> obviously... A lot of people have also become involved with this. Of course, Sean Casey's very involved, mm -hmm. former Red, um, and yes. a number of players have given their time, a number of mm -hmm. celebrities as well. Mm -hmm. And explain how the program works and reaching out to, to schools. There's programs for schools. What else is involved? Well, you know, you mentioned Sean, and that's one of the things I'm truly grateful for, being the son of Joe Nuxall. And you know, if it wasn't for that, I would have never connected with Sean. Sean's... Uh, truly one of the unique professional athletes uh, besides the baseball he, he's a unique human being and sean when i first approached him about this uh, i never i didn't know him at all <clears throat> and i sat down and wrote a letter we were doing uh, assemblies at school focusing on different character traits mm -hmm. and I, I remember asking dad i said you think sean casey might be interested in writing him a letter write him a letter dear sean he calls me that night and it launched a, you know, just a wonderful friendship. And we put together a, <clears throat> excuse me, a package for schools to help uh, teachers uh, get them maybe thinking about how they can integrate this character piece, um, administrators and so on. And we, we've sent it out and uh, we've had some, you know, some great, great successes. It, it's a challenge. Um, you know, the, the, the culture of schools now is based on test scores. and. Um, which is great, but uh, you know, I personally, I think uh, you know, I want certainly intelligent kids, but above all, I want good kids. You know, kids who are good citizens and so on. So, uh, we feel good about about the work we're doing. We'll continue uh, to to do it. Great. We're going to run down some more pictures. All this right. is fun. Oh boy. This is showing <clears throat> See what uh, rings a bell. Uh, yes, let's see what we have. Is there one where I have hair? <laughs> well, what are you talking about? Oh, here's this well, one. <laughs> this I'm the one that should be saying that. This looks like a classic <laughs> setting right here. Yeah. We'll show this in a second. Somebody's in the baseball, somebody's not. <laughs> I was like, Actually, the, I remember the sun was in my. I was squinting because of the sun. Okay. <laughs> well, I had my Beach Boys striped shirt on. Yeah, was really the Brian Wilson one. <laughs> because you were at the it beach. Was, it was inspired by the Beach Boys. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, spring training, Al Lopez Field, right outside. I remember Dad always says he had one of his rubber jackets on. Yeah, we always used to kid him. He'd wear those rubber suits oh, and uh, he'd. He would Blues, sweat, off like, sweat off 10 in ten one day, pounds. but a few six packs later, the weight was right back on. <laughs> now, this was, I didn't realize this, you pointed this out to me. Mm -hmm. Your father was not always with the Reds organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only year uh, he wasn't with the Reds is when they, when they won the pennant. He kind of <laughs> took that personally. No, but he was with uh, Kansas City. When I remember about Kansas City, I was six years old. And I remember, mom may not remember this, but I, I remember I was so in love with our neighborhood growing up. We just had the greatest neighborhood. We had woods, you know, it's, it's during the day where you could go out and play all day and come home at night for dinner. Sure. And I remember mom saying that dad had been traded to, to Kansas City. I remember saying, I'm not going. I'll live here, I'll live here by myself, six years old. I would have too, but I didn't. <laughs> what do you remember about Kansas City? I remember going to the games and seeing the sheep that were dyed different colors. Well, Charlie Finley was the owner of yeah. the athletics. <laughs> yeah, there was this terrace, and Charlie liked these unique, odd ideas. And to keep the grass down in the terrace, he dyed these sheep. So you look up and see a red, a green, and a yellow sheep. But, you know, everybody was like, look at those sheep out there. And he started fireworks. He was the fireworks, first one to yes. do fireworks. That was a big thrill to go to the Kansas City games and huh. 
and uh, see, you know, see the fireworks go off. And how long were you in Kansas City? Just one, one summer. One summer. One summer. It was traded back to the Reds. We could walk to the uh, Harry Truman Museum from our house. Did you know that, by the way? I, <laughs> yes, I did know that, okay. Sean. Yeah, I knew Harry that. Truman Harry Truman, uh, yeah, there was a, uh, well, he was a, a president. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great summer. That's, that's actually good. Because today, <clears throat> nobody stays, very few, stay with the team for their career. So mm -hmm. if they have a family, they're uprooted more often. And again, mm -hmm. the roots were, were very deep here in this area. Again, that's affectionately calls him Hamilton Joe. Mm -hmm. And you wanted, you wanted, you didn't want to leave either. No, no. Yeah, we were fortunate. Uh, you know, a lot of players, once they're traded, they, they're not traded back. And he was actually traded back to the Reds. You know, obviously finished his career in playing. Comeback uh, award. He was a comeback player of the year. Yeah, player. that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, luckily Kansas City was just a short, short-term thing. Here's this is an interesting picture. This is just fun. Yeah. <laughs> One of uh, Dad's favorites, Sparky. One of our, everyone's favorites. Sparky was one of the most genuine uh, human beings I think I, I ever met. Uh, we had the great, one of my great pleasures or experiences. Uh, Dad uh, had asked Sparky to come in town to uh, honor Bill Moeller. I think it was Bill's 50th. 50th anniversary or something, or he was retiring, and uh, Sparky came in town, and we had breakfast at Bob Evans, of course, and uh, uh, Sparky uh, was a, another unique, unique human being. I thought, you brought a picture of your dad with Bill Moore, I don't think. Yeah, maybe over uh, might there. be over there, yeah. yeah. But Sparky, you know, the thing I remember about Sparky, I loved his quote about his dad, and I think that about our father, too. Uh, Sparky had a quote that his dad never let him fall in love with himself. And I thought, you know, that's that's that was our dad. He he, he did not let us fall in love with ourselves. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the okay, this this I didn't realize. This is a fantastic story here mm -hmm. that you were telling me or idea. Yeah, uh, I I think this is so cool. When I think back, uh, you know, you would never be able to do this nowadays. But at the end of every season, Dad would round up uh, the players because back then the players lived in the community. You know, Gus Bell lived in the community. Roy McMillan stayed here. Ted Klazuski was here. Gordy Coleman was here. Uh, just on and on. So he would gather his, his buddies on the, on the Reds team and come up to Hamilton. I'm sure some of the people in the audience remember they would play this, the local beer mug softball team every year. And I remember, uh, gosh, you know, I think back of, and afterwards we would, we would go for like a picnic. I just remember, you know, hanging out, playing uh, uh, flag football with, Touch football with Pete Rose when he was a rookie, mm. you know. So what a what a cool thing to look back on. So. This is great because they're just mm -hmm. in uh, just in t-shirts, mm -hmm. hats, playing yeah. uh, playing yeah. baseball here. Lots of folks gathered around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you didn't have to pay him to play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Well, let's see. There's um, just so many pictures. This, there's, of course, we all have an affection from this area for your father, Hamilton Joe. Um, this is an interesting story. You said this was down. <laughs> I yeah, in I'm not sure if it was Houston or Arizona. Uh, wife and I went on a on a trip to watch the Reds. That's another one of the neat perks we had, even up until you know Dad passed away. Uh, we loved going on road trips and watching the Reds play, and you know, going up visiting in the booth and so on. And we happened to be, I, I think it was Arizona. I don't know if you remember that, Bonnie, but um, we were walking out from the game and she points out, hey look, somebody's got a Nuxall shirt. And I just thought, yeah, how cool is, pardon? I think it might have been Los Angeles. Los Angeles, okay. And I thought, what a cool thing. Yeah. This, just thought that was neat. This, this, is, this is not, that's what, when you yeah. said that. Like, not a relative or anything. This is not a relative. No, this is somebody no. in another city. Somebody in another city. Who loves yeah. Joe Nuxall. Yeah. That, is just that was one of the uh, really amazing things about going to different cities is how they knew, how they knew dad. Uh, hmm. I, I was just, I'm still amazed by that. We still get uh, you know, maybe an email every once in a while from someone and wherever, just uh, you know, the impact he had in different, different cities was, uh, was a neat thing, neat thing to witness. Last year I was in <clears throat> Ireland on the Aran Islands in this great restaurant having lunch and there were these two very young 
they were uh, they had just gotten engaged. They were both in the I think Air Force, uh, just the cutest kids. Uh, and they and we invited them. We knew they were from America to sit with us at the table. And uh, the uh, the guy got up and went to the restroom at one point. So I'm talking to his fiance and. Uh, she's telling me, you know, where they're from in America and all that. And, or no, I went to the restroom. That's what it was. And then when I came back, her fiance turned to me and he said, are you related to the Joe Nuxall? The and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm on an island in Ireland. I said, how in the world? Well, he had looked at my, uh, my uh, backpack that had my tag on it. And he just put two and two together. So, yeah, it's yeah. bizarre when and where his name pops up. <laughs> I, it just popped in my head, uh, Chris Johnson, uh, the Johnson family, George I, is the board member, his, right. his, his brother passed away, Chris. Uh, Chris, And uh, we had gone to Toronto uh, to actually not to see the Reds, but there was these Delta escape weekends. So anyway, let's go to Toronto. So we're coming back from Toronto, the airport's being re totally reconstructed, there's people all over, they're sitting on the floors waiting to get on the plane. So I noticed a lady, I don't know if she had a, something with Cincinnati on it, so I went over and got to talking to her, you know, and you know, are you from Cincinnati? Oh, where are you from? Yeah, Cincinnati. And her husband perks up, and he didn't know who we were, I didn't know him. It was Chris Johnson, we found out later, he perks up like this, he says, we're from Hamilton, Ohio, home of Joe Nuxall, <laughs> youngest player ever in Major League Baseball. My wife and I, really, we, we know him. We've heard of yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was a neat thing to know how far it, far it reached out. And, uh, and the thing is, his, his <clears throat> proclaiming the fame of Hamilton is with Joe Nuxall. Yeah, you know, not that, yeah. That's what most people would identify yeah. he wanted yeah. to bring out. That's wonderful. Yeah. The, uh, we're going to open this up to questions here in a little bit. I just have to bring this out. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> oh, this is, now this is not your father's jersey. No, this is, no, no. This was yours right. or was this Phil? Uh, I'm was not this? sure. Phil? Uh, one, of, one of the other, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know either, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, um, I gave mine right away. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> That's what I figured. It is, it is now. Anyway, this yeah. was, this was, uh, you wore this when you were how old? Uh, gosh, I'm thinking nine, probably eight or nine years old. We got to do the father and son games, you know, how go on the field. That? Yeah. Another, uh, you know, one of those neat, neat memories. I remember I was always so frustrated because you know, I, I, I wanted to compete and they played with a tennis ball. Oh, oh, Dang it! I want to hit a real baseball. You know, I thought I could hit one out of Crosley Field at eight years old. Right, but, uh, right. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I'm glad we held on to that. I held on to that uniform. <laughs> <laughs> the um, I'm just going to throw through a couple more things. Sure. Up here. Again, we're going to open sure. up questions. Uh, some of the things that you're working on with the uh, foundation. Yeah, yeah. Before Dad passed away, we we kind of grouped together kind of five of his legacies and uh, a, a rather large torch he, he passed along to, uh, to me and Phil as well. Uh, so we kind of identified those legacies. One, the, the, the scholarship fund, which he started in 1989, which uh, was really kind of rare back then for, for a major league player, any professional athlete to start a golf event uh, for scholarship, so he was always very proud of that. So that's that's a legacy that continues very strong. Uh, Fairfield Community Foundation's taken that over, but it's, it's played in Hamilton Elks each year, and uh, we're so honored, really, to keep that going. We uh, present uh, two thousand dollars scholarships to every high school in Butler County, so that that's going strong. Um, Phil mentioned the uh, Children's Center at One Way Farm, still in the fundraising phase of that. Uh, Barb Kondo, uh, who started the One Way Farm for Abused Children, uh, she wants to build a gymnasium with some classrooms uh, and serve certainly her students and her kids, but also serve uh, Special Olympics. Uh, we have the uh, Character Fund itself, uh, continue with our mission with our projects. We have the Reds Rookie Success uh, League, which is uh, really something uh, 
we uh, partnered with with the Reds Community Fund, and this we just finished our fifth year, where we bus uh, five, 250 students from all over Butler County. Our target is disadvantaged kids, and we provide them a a baseball experience. But what I got interested in is is the character piece. How can we integrate this character piece into the baseball setting? So right. that's that's been a great. Uh, a great thing for us to, to continue on. So, uh, and then the fifth piece is the Miracle League, <clears throat> which you held up, and um, that is something that's really on the front burner right now. We're very close to breaking ground. Miracle League is basically a, a rubberized baseball field for, for kids, particularly in wheelchairs and other disabilities. So uh, we hope we'll, hopeful this next summer we'll, we'll have that completed. And I'll tell you, I've been to two grand openings of Miracle League fields, and uh, there's nothing like seeing a little, you know, a person in a wheelchair. It gets me teared up thinking about it, uh, playing ball for the first time. Being yeah. able to participate. So, this is why he never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, for me, it's, it's, I know Dad's, Dad's whole life, and I'm sure if, if, if he could answer that question now, was giving back. Uh, he knew how fortunate he was to grow up in Hamilton and how the Hamilton people supported him. You know, I think of Bill Moeller, the impact he had on Dad's career, and all the people at Hamilton. It was his way of saying thank you. And so I, you know, I, I'm proud to. That's wonderful. Thank you. The, a couple of things we want to show you real quick. Again, some of the pictures we saw that you brought in are in this book. This was put together by the Inquirer. Inquire. Mm -hmm. Inquire. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot more pictures over here, and a lot of them are in this book, so that's something that people are interested in. And also, again, for your book, again, the proceeds going to One Way Farm. Mm -hmm. So Joe Nuxall Children's Center. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. At the One Way Farm. And in a beautiful book as well. Mm -hmm. And you now you've spoken in here. You've been in Fitness Center. You've had mm -hmm. uh, speaking yeah. patients there. Mm -hmm. So you're, in your second career, you've been out and about as well. So. Congratulations. Well, you know, when I was a kid, you know, Kim and I would go with Dad when he would speak, you know, during the off season. I mean, he was on the, the speaking circuit. And I would, I would watch him and think, how does he do this without any notes? I never saw him ever pull out a note. And he could talk in front of probably thousands of people, no effort. I was petrified to speak in front of people all the way through college. Theater definitely helped me with that, but still I had trouble if I wasn't on stage speaking. And lo and behold, now I find myself That's going out do. in the community. Yeah, like <laughs> all the time. And I don't use notes anymore. It's, <laughs> it's amazing how that, you know. I think once happens. you find a passion, it's easier yeah, to talk about it. I, I know for me, same thing. You would have never seen me here if it wasn't, I think, for you know, finding that passion. To, to make a difference, you know, in, in, in the community and so on. So we appreciate it. Yeah. We're going to uh, go ahead and open up, uh, open up for questions before we wrap up. We'll take as much time as you want for questions. Anybody have uh, anything you'd like to ask, sir? Yeah, I'm going to change the subject a little bit. All Instead right. of talking to Kim and Bill, I want to ask them another question. <laughs> We're going to ask we them told them to you. <laughs> <laughs> Perry, Georgia, Angelinas. Angelinas. Oh, oh, yeah. gosh. Every year, Is spring training. <laughs> Best garlic bread around. <laughs> oh, yeah. I said this, we go to Florida every year. We stay in Perry, Georgia. Oh, yeah. At Motel School. Yeah. Evidently, you know where I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. yeah. I go down for breakfast one morning, and there was a show. I got, have no idea they're there. Yeah. And yeah. my wife graduated with your dad, to be huh. honest with you. Huh. But anyway, I said, Joe. What in the world are you doing in here? Well, they call it spring training, of course. Yeah. I think it's Plant City then. Yeah, that was their and stop. Yeah. He said, well, we always stop here. He said, that's the best of time to rest during the yeah. night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you oh, yeah. That's so, right. And you know what? We bring with him. We enjoy the Angelina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's great. The, uh, and they're no longer there. No. no they're not there. You're right. I just passed yeah. through last year, and you're right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Being part of the community, everybody would say they would, would see him. He had a seat at uh, Bob Evans. Uh, yeah, oh, gosh, yeah. Yes. We, Dad and I ate breakfast 
15 years every, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Other questions? Oh, by the way, I asked him, I said, well, where's your wife? He said, oh, I can't get her up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> he had to take her call me up. To <laughs> Three and six. There was three and three, three. and six. What year was that? I asked. Uh, Fifty-two. Five, six. Fifty-seven. No. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People sometimes say, "Well, why did your dad move to Fairfield when he was from Hamilton?" Good question. Answer: Fairfield wasn't a city back then. It was just literally right up the road. From Hamilton, so you we know, moved and to then, the country. Well, yeah, yeah, we moved. Just, yeah, we moved. Well, the, everything Fairfield was country farmers. then. Farmers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then it became Fairfield after after they moved there. So, okay. yeah. well, I think a lot of people probably have more stories and questions. <laughs> Some people that uh, grew up nearby. <laughs> yeah, we were neighbors. Uh, we lived right in the back of them, and uh, when they when the Reds had had an off day. A lot of the players would be up to Knoxville's house and they had a cookout. How the news traveled, I don't know. <laughs> and our backyards were covered with kids, but they were very good to them. They went back, they talked to them, they signed their hats, they say give them autographs. And finally, Joe would say, Boys, our wives are getting mad at us, the food's ready. <laughs> And the kids would leave. They were very good to the kids. We didn't eat Twitter back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another great memory, thinking of the ball players that came to the house. I know Wally posed with Dad's best buddy. And Wally, anytime Wally came to speak in Cincinnati, he stayed overnight and always woke up to uh, Wally and Dad laughing. They both had this, this loud, bellowing laugh, you know. So. Dad laughed in his sleep. Yeah, yeah. And talked in his sleep. Belly but, laugh. Yeah. Used to scare me. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Frank Robinson. You know, uh, just to think of those guys in your house now is, is pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty cool thought. We yeah. think about the backyard picnic. That wouldn't happen now <clears throat> because you would have walls and security yeah. and yeah. dogs. And, yeah. uh, you know. But I, I, I couldn't believe you know how how many kids where that word got out. I don't yeah. know. There's, there's only five kids in the neighborhood. Who's <laughs> <playing this year. laughs> Showed up. Did you have a swing set in your backyard? Yes. I think that was the swing set. On, I, had, I walked to kindergarten, Pierce Elementary, and one day on the way home from school, I pushed the swing, and it came, and it came back and hit me in the eye, ended up in the hospital. <laughs> Statue of limit, right. limitations is up yeah. full. You're you can't gonna, sue him. You're not going to sue him now. <laughs> no, no, no. Too many good memories. And, and, and um, somebody else I was talking to, can't remember. It. Grew up next door or down the street. Who else was here? Right here, she did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Remember Priscilla? I wanted to ask you particularly, Phil. Do you re we live three doors from you on Arlington. Do you remember before there were houses on the other side of Arlington? On Sundays, we used to play uh, baseball in the street. Oh, oh, sure. Do you remember that? Yeah. And Bob Carnu, his name was Cornell, but they always called him Carnu, <laughs> always gave you such a hard time. <laughs> and the woods, remember the woods? Well, yeah. They were, I think eventually it was like IGA or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wall. Yeah. My parents uh, often visited us, and, and they came to know your father. And then uh, they went to Florida in the winter, and one time when you, your dad was doing spring training in Florida, they went to see him. He recognized them right away, and oh man, they were so tickled to think that Joe would remember them just as the us on Arlington. Yeah. I think that's what's exciting about your father, as well as I remember this about Gordy Coleman. <clears throat> Unbelievable memory, whether it was a memory for faces or just that oh, yeah. he could, he oh, no. saw you and knew, and yeah. knew you. Yeah. And would remember you. Oh no! It was it was incredible. Yeah. That I did not inherit. <laughs> no, me neither. He he did. He had an amazing memory. <laughs> I think I, you know all the times I heard Dad speak, I never heard the same. He always had a different story about something. 
Yeah, he did. He had an incredible memory. Back to the minor leagues, he faced, you know, Lefty Johnson with the, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how he could remember that. I wish I had a, a tinge of that. And, he always, and you were always a friend yeah. when, when you met yeah. him. Yeah. Your father, yeah. you were a friend, which is neat. Sir? I'm a member of a couple of railroads. Yeah. One of them is based on the Cincinnati Museum Center, and that's the Cincinnati Railroad Club. Yes, sir. And a few years back, Joe was invited and he spoke in front of our meeting. He was held in the auditorium down in that first level. He really gave an extremely interesting talk. So, for example, about how they used to travel around on their trains to all the different cities around the country. Yeah. That was quite a deal. I always thought if I could go back in time in Dad's career, it would be a ride. Can you imagine a ride on a railroad train to St. Louis or wherever with the Cincinnati Reds? Oh my gosh. You Hours know. on the train yeah. car, just the stories and oh my stories, gosh, yeah. playing cards yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That what would, a that would cool be thought. Yeah. We've been to a couple cities and it's neat. St. Louis, we, we we like to travel over there and they've made the the old train station a uh, a mall there. And you know when we first went there with Dad, he, he said, "Well, this is where we came in." I thought that's the coolest thing. It was for me, yeah. like be there where he pulled in, forty some fifty years ago. Well, the train to, pulled yeah, in for the game yeah, game. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always thought that was a cool thing. Yeah. New York City Grand Central yeah. Station, you know, it's, uh, it was a, it was a neat thought. Neat thought. First yeah. recipient of the Joe Nuxall Award, right there. Well, stand up and give us your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Greg, I had to mention it. One of my favorites right there. <laughs> I'm Greg Meyer. Uh, Jim was my uh, freshman baseball coach at, at Fairfield, uh, 1982, yeah. right? Yeah. And I was just going to say, you know, you were talking about your, you really got into the character education and all about 10 years ago, and I think you got into it a lot, a lot sooner than that. And it goes all the way back to when he was my coach, and I have to say that what he instilled in us as players back in 1982 uh, helped make me the person I am today. So I thank you for that. Thank you, Before it was a program, he was teaching character. Thank you. That's what makes uh, thank you for sure. coaching and teaching great right there. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Very good. Feelings quite mutual. <laughs> Any other comments or questions or stories to share? <laughs> Chuckle, oh yeah, I got stories. <laughs> Sir, a group of us coming from football practice, you know, that night, to, and then your dad was among us. And then we stopped at the Reapers thing, which is still there. Oh, I'm yeah, jealous. And we, we hot dogs were there, root beer, you could get two hot dogs and root beer for a quarter. But anyway, I remember your dad ate. <laughs> or something like that, and we got to talking. I wonder how many he could eat. Yeah. Uh, he ended up eating 11 hot dogs. Uh, uh, and uh, I think we ran out of money. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't eating more. I yeah, wow. Like $3 worth of hot dogs. That's yeah. a lot of money back then. Yeah. <laughs> they mentioned football. Yeah, I always felt Dad actually would have been, I think his best sport would have been football. He had such a fierce competitive spirit, we'll call it. <laughs> Otherwise known as a temper. Yeah, yeah. Well, you said a challenge to him and he was going to take it. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about playing tennis with him now? He oh, would no. hit, when we played tennis. He didn't like to lose anything, oh anytime, <laughs> anywhere. Ping pong, pool, tennis? I tennis, I tennis. thought he was, the ball was going to explode. He would hit it so hard. Same thing with bowling. It was just he didn't he full didn't out. he did not like, like to lose anything. <laughs> yeah, every year to spring training was a race. I made it in 16 hours and 25 minutes last year. I'm gonna do it in 1610. <laughs> <laughs> we are the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Take your time. Yeah, yeah. You can make it to Florida actually, and you can make it to Tampa in 13 hours if you drive 95 miles an hour. That's your average. Yeah. Average Scared gone. us to death. He should have been a race car driver actually. Well, we thank uh, thank everyone. More in the back, or oh, I'm no. sorry, was some... your mother could hit a ball. She you should oh, yeah. hit a ball. Oh yeah, mom some throw. Mom had yeah. some uh, she athletic ability. Golf yeah. One day, uh, yeah. she had never played before. There were five women who were all neighbors, and she had never ever played. And she could <laughs> smack that ball. <laughs> she has a game. 
Yeah. She wanted to smack us, but she smacked <laughs> the golf ball instead. We played um, three holes, and, it, and we were at Winton, and it came back by the clubhouse. And she said, well, let's go in and have something to eat. So we did, and then she, <laughs> she said, this is really a good game. We'll have to play this. <laughs> we said, down and we've only played three holes. <laughs> Did you know she played the trumpet? Was it for Big Blue or Junior High School? Wilson Junior, Wilson junior High School. She was a trumpet player. Just, just saying. <laughs> Little known fact. We're get, well, that's what we're learning tonight. We're learning. And really, you know, you think of mom, you think of that life, and I really give her credit for dealing with what she had to deal with. And that, that's a tough life. People think it's so glamorous and so on. It's a tough life. You know, dad gone a week and 10 days, sometimes two weeks at a time, you know, and she's left with, of course she had great kids, made, <laughs> made it easy, but if she would have had difficult kids, it would have been really yeah, hard. Been yeah. hard. <laughs> but I, you know, I do. We're I, gonna I give, change places. Yeah. <laughs> give, her, I give her a lot of credit. You know, I think, to run, basically run the household. Right. She's running the household. Right. He leaves. And the other thing I think back to is how hard it would, you know, for instance, we, we go to a restaurant and it was almost like we would become invisible and all the attention to dad, sure. you know, sometimes totally ignoring, which I said, we understand we're not complaining about, but you know, kind of a hard, hard thing to Wait, all the attention was there. Constant, yeah. Constant, yeah. 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 yeah, I had more trouble than they did with it. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think it was Walter Cronkite's daughter, I think wrote a book yeah. on the edge of the spotlight. And it was about that same, same thing growing up with, you know, in a celebrity life, but uh, but uh, she handled it well. Good job, Mom. <laughs> well done. <laughs> and, uh, and your wife, Bonnie, also recognize her. The Absolutely. best sister-in-law in the world. She <laughs> is. She is. She, uh, she deals with my, uh, this obsession with my, with the charity work and handles, handles it all very well. Listens to my, uh, my ideas at four in the morning and <laughs> I got another idea. What about this? Uh -huh. Oh, good. Talk to me when I wake up. Whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we thank you very much for, uh, coming out and joining us. This has been a lot of fun. fun. Enjoyed and, it. Thank uh, you. And a lot thank of you. sharing. I know everybody has stories also of how your family has, uh, has touched their life in this area. We appreciate it. Thank okay. you very much for coming okay. out and joining us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Appreciate so it. Enjoyed it. Thank you.